Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about turbocharger blankets and whether or not there can be performance improvements by using a turbo blanket. Can you make more horsepower? Can you make torque sooner? What does it do uh, to the temperature underneath the hood? What happens with temperatures? Yeah, so Charles, you bought this for your GTI. Yes, yeah. And kind of what's turbo. the logic behind a turbo blanket? So the logic behind the blanket is to keep the heat where it's supposed to be. The hot side of the turbocharger, keep the heat there and keep it away from the cool side of the turbocharger as well as everywhere else in the engine compartment. So if we keep the hot side hot, we are going to increase temperature, increase pressure. And with more pressure comes more boost. Right. Yeah, the, the, idea, the idea is spool faster and keep everything cooler. Uh, they do talk about horsepower gains on certain vehicles, but obviously that's a dynamometer type test uh, to prove. Yes, yeah, so we're going to get into that at the end of this video. There's a cool, very cool study, scientific, you know, they used lab coats and glasses and a real engine dyno, which I'll talk about at the end of the video uh, with like super hardcore real data. But we did our own little testing because uh, it's fun to do on your own car and see what effects it has. Um, so we're first just going to be looking at temperature differences uh, in different locations on the car. And we're going to be using two tools to do that. One of them is this FLIR T1K camera. Uh, this is a thermal imaging camera and it's $50,000. So we're being really careful with it. Yep. Uh, I definitely don't own that. FLIR was kind <laughs> enough to loan it to me. This piece I do own, not quite as expensive. This is a temperature data logger. So we've got thermal probes in different locations on the car, and we're going to measure temperatures at each of those locations. The things we were kind of curious about most was what does it do to some of the things right near the turbocharger, and how does it change the overall engine compartment temperature? So we put a probe right over the hot side of the turbocharger. Yep, right we, by that oil line, which is right above it. Right at the oil line. There's a coolant line that runs near there, which is a factory location, and then on the intake yes on the intake right beside it and then one near uh, the intake portion of the turbocharger outlet so right coming oh, from the turbo before it goes to the intercooler right so we did we did a bunch of different testing we took it on a drive let the car warm up um, we then did some pretty aggressive pulls, I would say, yes. wide, some wide open throttle pulls. Uh, for those of you wondering, the boost is right around 12 PSI average on this car, a uh, handful of other modifications too. And then we came back, logged all our temperatures and used the FLIR cam. You can see really just how hot the turbocharger is. Yeah, so the turbocharger uh, itself was getting as high as 500 degrees Celsius. Um, and so then we put the turbo blanket on top of that and that top, uh, the turbo itself, when I measured it, you know, you're seeing somewhere in the 430 degree range to 500 degrees C. When we measured this turbo blanket, it was only 160 to 200. So you have far less heat radiating out to the rest of the engine. And so consequently, you can see numbers drop, um, not across the board, but in a lot of areas. So looking on the compressor side of the turbo, we're seeing temperatures around 125 to 145 without a blanket and down to 102 to 137 with the blanket. So on average, look to be lower. Uh, on the turbo out intake and on the coolant line, we didn't notice a temperature change. So around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius on the turbo out and 100 degrees C for the coolant line. So the coolant line was the temperature of coolant. For those, I think it's important to note too that the Air temperature today is probably in the 20 or so degree, it's 25 cold. degree Fahrenheit. It is very cold and I think that probably is impacting a little bit of what we're seeing underneath the hood. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, and so what else did we have? Oh, we looked at the inside of the footwell uh, as a passenger at your feet. What is the temperature gonna be like? Because of the location of the turbocharger and its proximity to the bulkhead, we were really interested to see how much heat was radiating into the cabin of the car on a car that doesn't have a heater core at this time versus, <laughs> you know, without the, without the blanket versus with the blanket. And we saw a pretty significant, yeah, we saw we felt it. and felt a pretty significant temperature difference with the blanket versus without the blanket. Yeah, so the peak temperature I saw without the blanket was five to six degrees Celsius in that footwell uh, right on the other side of the bulkhead. And the peak temperature I saw with the turbo blanket on it uh, was minus one to minus two degrees Celsius. So we were not getting warmed up. And in the winter, uh, turbo blankets could make you cold if you don't have heat. We did this test by first starting with the car stone cold, like 
overnight cold. We hooked up all our probes, let the car warm up for a couple of minutes, took it, got the car up to operating temp. Then we did some moderate to heavy acceleration to really heat soak everything as best we could. Brought it back, did some measurements with the FLIR camera, let it cool down as much as really was necessary. Once the car's up to operating temperature, there's no point in letting it cool all the yeah. way back down. I, at that point, installed the blanket. Charles did it. <laughs> and it's not a team effort. <laughs> it was not a, a collaboration there. Uh, we put the blanket on and then repeated the same route and the same amount of light, medium, heavy accelerations to try and really get as close to the exact same scenario as we could during this test. It's important to note again that ambient temperature was pretty cold, but was consistent, I think, throughout yeah. our filming time. Those are, of course, variables that can play into these readings uh, when, when we're looking at our data overall, but it's affecting our yeah. data overall. And, and in general, any effect we would see would be the air temperature would be warmer, and since we did testing with a turbo blanket second, uh, it would have a negative effect on the turbo right. blanket results, not the other way around, right. which would cause for concern. So thankfully we thought about it a little bit. Right, or we just got lucky and happened to do it that way. <laughs> yeah. So the results from this data logger, so we had those four points we measured at the oil line on average. So what we did is we took that, that loop run from when we start driving and then the loops that we make uh, and all the hard pulls. I averaged the temperature of each of these four uh, across that entire driving duration. So no time spent idling, always driving and averaging the temperatures at each of these four locations. On average, the oil line was 12.7 degrees Celsius cooler. The coolant line was 14.9 degrees Celsius cooler. The air intake, which this is pretty cool, 3.4 degrees Celsius cooler. And the turbocharger out, uh, basically feeding the intercooler before it gets to the intercooler right out of the compressor, was six degrees Celsius cooler. So improvements in every single category. Uh, and that's where you see that huge benefit of this keeping all the heat within the turbocharger and not letting it escape out into the engine bay. And I'm, these were kind of the four areas that I was concerned about, you know, the oil line being one, the coolant line being right there as well. The one I'm really happy about seeing is the, is the intake temperature yeah, number. Cool. That low, you know, that low lower temperature is going to be denser air, so that should produce more maximum horsepower and make the car a little bit more fun to drive. They do mention you should feel better, like a better responsiveness from the car. I didn't really experience any change in drivability with the vehicle, positive or negative. It seemed to behave exactly the same way as it does all the time. Overall, these are minor changes, I think, but add them all together, having a, a cooler underhood, less heat soak, you know, less wear on components, hopefully, and, and probably if we were to do these dyno runs, seeing a slight percentage increase, which you may or may not feel depending on how much money you spent and how soon you yep. installed your part after you spent those monies on the butt dyno. Okay, so those are the results from our testing with Charles, uh, and I'm sure many of you have seen perhaps one or two flaws with our testing. Uh, I call nonsense. I think we did a great job. I think there's no flaws to be uh, But it can be done way more scientifically, and that's what we're going to be talking about. A study out of the University of Texas at Austin, which was done in 2016 with a PTP turbo blanket. Uh, all, everything is super relevant. Of which I paid for. This was not sponsored. This is not sponsored yes. by PTP yeah. uh, or be. anyone. <laughs> and so they took a 6.7 liter Cummins diesel uh, and put a turbo blanket on that engine and looked at temperatures before and after. They also looked at tip in so applying full throttle and then watching what happens with torque, what happens to the turbocharger RPM, what happens to boost. Uh, and so very, very cool study, very well done. And the only difference between testing, this is all done on an engine dyno, um, so laboratory controlled results, you don't have to worry about external factors. The only difference, literally the only thing they changed was putting a turbo blanket on. Uh, no engine tuning, none of that. They purely wanted to see what the effects would be of just putting on a turbo blanket. So they looked at seven different locations and monitored temperature. The first temperature they looked at was the very top of the turbocharger, the surface temperature of the turbo. And they saw a 150 degree increase using the turbo blanket. So kind of earlier when we were mentioning it holds all the heat in, this is the proof of that. So the turbocharger itself increased by 150 degrees Celsius. 
They also measured the air intake temperature leaving the compressor on its way to the intercooler. That remained relatively unchanged. They saw a increase by 0.7 degrees Celsius, uh, but basically a neg negligible gain uh, for the intake leaving the compressor. Also somewhat negligible was the exhaust entering the exhaust turbine. Uh, so it dropped 1.2 degrees Celsius, uh, but really you know, not a, a huge noticeable difference. The exhaust gas exiting the turbocharger was about 5 degrees Celsius uh, hotter. And part of the reason for this, you can see the exhaust itself, uh, the actual exhaust pipe exiting the turbo was about 113.7 degrees Celsius warmer. Now they also measured the side of the turbocharger, the surface temperature, uh, the exhaust portion of it, and that was 225 degrees Celsius hotter. So you can really see how much heat this thing is holding in, uh, pretty incredible. And one of the things that was really interesting that they did is they measure the oil temperature coming out of the turbo. So you're feeding in uh, oil to keep that bearing lubricated. And a lot of people might think if you put on a turbo blanket and your turbo's getting way hotter, your oil temperature as a result is going to suffer. Well, interestingly enough, there was, was almost exactly the same temperature uh, before and after putting the turbo blanket on. Now this does have, this turbocharger has a heat shield uh, between the turbine side and the center uh, so that it prevents exactly for this. So the idea, um, it, it's pretty interesting that you can actually put these on, see real benefits and not worry about, you know, coking your oil. Uh, so that was fascinating to me because I thought one of the downsides might be oil temperature and it turned out in this test, it was not. Yeah, so instead of, you know, that oil coming in and pulling the heat out, it's not the oil pulling it out, it's going out the exhaust, which is, is good. Yeah, I think the one thing that you may, you know, need to actually think about there is letting your engine cool down rather than just going super hard and then shutting it off then your turbocharger is really hot, that oil's no longer moving, yep. it's sitting right there, and then it would likely get warmer. The, the other side of that though is that's good turbocharger practice. Whether you have a, yes. a high performance car, whether you have a normal, you know, average turbocharged car, blanket, no blanket, that's good practice to do, yes. period. Yes, absolutely. Let your car warm down if you've been driving it like crazy. Warm, warm down. down. <laughs> <laughs> Now, they looked at all kinds of different data points in this test, and one of the ones that I thought was interesting that they did is they took a low load, so the dyno applies a low load to the engine, a form of resistance to it, and a constant torque, and then they measure what the engine is doing, uh, and in all of these scenarios, they took five different engine RPM with a constant low load, somewhere around like 25 to 30% load for the engine, and in all five RPM intervals, they noticed that the uh, turbocharger with the turbo blanket had a higher turbo speed, so it was rotating faster, and they noticed uh, that the boost was higher for all five RPM as well. So you would expect that with the turbo uh, speed being higher. So in all five cases at a low load. Okay, so what happens at full load? And this is where it gets really fascinating of what they would observe. So it's a tip-in scenario, you apply throttle and watch what happens. Uh, and so really interesting to see at any given point in time, uh, the turbocharger with the turbo blanket had about a 200 to 250 RPM engine speed advantage. So what does a higher engine speed uh, turn into? Well, they saw the turbocharger RPM about 10,000 to 12,000 RPM faster at the same point in time with the turbo blanket than without the turbo blanket. So what does that translate to? Well, about 0.2 to 0.3 bar of boost or about three to four and a half uh, PSI additional pressure at that given point in time. And at one point, this was as high as 140 newton meters of torque, 100 pound foot advantage at the same point in time, purely because of a turbo blanket. And that is fascinating. Well, and that, back, that legit backs up all the claims of faster spool, yes. more power, given by the manufacturer, which 
is honestly it's incredible yes and they were saying basically having this turbo blanket on was the equivalent of while you're spooling up not once you get to peak torque but while you're spooling up uh, the equivalent of having an additional liter on this 6.7 liter engine uh, which is crazy um, so and that's all just from changing this and keep in mind you wouldn't want to just stick this on uh, after you've let's say you were designing it from the start from scratch you would design that turbo specifically for having the blanket. So this turbo isn't optimized for having a blanket, but it still can make use of it. If you were to do it from scratch and say, we know we're putting a turbo blanket on this, you would design the turbocharger slightly differently to fully take advantage of those changes. Now, does it make more power? So here's what's interesting. It enabled the engine to get to peak torque faster, but ultimately both of them did reach a very similar peak torque. So the change wasn't my car has more power, it's my car gets more power sooner. And so that's that's actually really cool. I mean, it's, it's going to accelerate your car faster because you're getting that power sooner, you're getting that torque sooner, uh, and as high as 100 pound feet at the same point in time uh, advantage. So I crazy. Wish, I wish this gave me another 100 pound feet of torque on my yes. car. Yes, unfortunately, your engine's not quite as large as a 6.7 liter uh, diesel and it isn't a diesel so the torque the torque on a, on a Cummins 6.7 is enormous I think it's something like a thousand newton meters but uh, even still to see a 10% yeah, over 10% you know, increase, increase is cool is very cool at, at a given point in time so this has been fascinating and thank you Charles yeah. for inviting me. Uh, it's been cool to learn about turbo blankets and their effectiveness, not only from our own tests, uh, real world with you know what happens out there just driving around on any given day with a sweet Volkswagen GTI, which by the way pulls really well. When it gets traction. Yeah, when it gets traction. <laughs> it definitely likes to spin tires and kind of chase around yeah, out there. It's, it's, it's squirrely is the word I like to use. Yes, it's very squirrely. I told that to a race car driver and they looked at me like, what are you saying? And I said, squirrely, like oversteer. And well, I mean, this is understeer in yeah. this case, but you know, it chases or around. Torque it, steer is actually, I think, more torque, accurate. Torque steer is also squirrely. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, you guys should check out Charles's channel. I'm sure you already have before because he's been on lots of times, but lots check it times. out and Thank subscribe you. to him. He's a really cool guy. He's super smart and he's good looking. <laughs> Stay fun. <laughs> Stay fun. Have safe. Be dirty. See you guys. Bye.